fake IDs have beaten KYC at a crypto exchange. What does this mean for you? Let's dive in. This is crazy. As someone who's been running a Bitcoin platform for the better part of 11 years, this really, really hits home because ultimately KYC is not something that I like to do. It's something that we have to do to remain compliant. So there's a whole issue here of are these rules really keeping people safe or are the rules so far outdated that once again, the government regulations are not really giving us a fair shake at actually innovating. It's creating this weird incentive loop to just for the scam artists to innovate. And there's no chance that government regulations can keep up, but we'll put all of that into a box. Maybe comment down below. Let me know what you think and we'll talk about it later. Today, I wanna highlight what the very specific process is that this guy from 404 Media went through to make a fake ID, not just one fake ID. Homeboy turned himself into John Wick on a fake ID. You pissed John, are you? Yeah. He says, new inside the underground site where neural networks churn out fake IDs. It literally took him two minutes to make a passable California state driver's license, which is insane. So uh, he took a photo of his fake British passport. So he made a fake passport, took a photo of that fake passport, and then uploaded it to make this uh, this other fake ID. Lilu Dallas Multipass. He then uploaded it into a crypto exchange called OKX. OKX then approved it successfully making him a cryptocurrency account with a fake name and a fake ID. The face is mine, says him. Didn't want to implicate any innocent person, but site says it's going to launch AI faces. Literally use any face. You can generate any face you want with AI, put it onto an ID, and it will be passable to at least (laughs) <laughs> at least OKX, <laughs> it will be possible to open up a fake. So here's some other IDs that have been service has created. Uh, so maybe this wasn't actually this guy, but you can see Keanu Reeves, AKA John Wick. We've got these multiple different fake IDs. Um, OKX uses a company called Jumio for its identity verification. Jumio is a service, there's multiple different services that do this. They basically do the heavy lifting of making sure that the IDs are good, making sure that the person who submitted the ID is the person who is on the ID, and then make sure that there's no nefarious activity happening with the person uh, behind the camera, basically. And so their job is to catch fake IDs, all things considered. This says, when 404 Media then explained that they had successfully passed an identity verification process using a fake generated ID, Jumio said it could only comment on Jumio's own tech rather than OKX's process. This is super important. It is actually quite possible here that all of this, because this story kind of blew up here, all of this actually is on OKX, not on Jumio. Jumio likely scans for IDs and then gives back something of a red, yellow, green. It's going to give back some signal that this identification is real if it was green or like, you know, I drew it on a piece of paper and wrote my name on it fake, which would be red. But it wouldn't be inconceivable that at that time, the risk tolerance for fake IDs was a little bit higher than maybe what it should have been. So it could be that Jumio did the right things and that OKX did the wrong things. But if this ID truly got past the internal Jumio detection for uh, for, for a fake ID, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a huge problem. So he had uh, Senator Ron Wyden chime in. Uh, They asked him for comment, obviously, and he said, this is the quote from the Senator. It is clear that AI-based tools that generate fake IDs and videos, deep fakes, are going to pose real fraud problems for government, agencies, financial institutions, and other companies. The United States desperately needs secure, authenticated IDs so that Americans can verify their identity when conducting sensitive or high-risk transactions with the government and private sector. Oof. Guys, this could get very, very messy. Now, we can all agree that someone with a fake ID shouldn't be able to pose as you and impersonate you. And that's like, honestly, a real possibility here. I mean, look, you guys, right now, here's my face. Take that right now, go put it on this fake ID website, make a fake ID posing to be me. That would create probably real problems for me. Please don't do that. We can see why this is a problem. However, what this is pushing towards, what this senator is maybe hinting towards is some sort of centralized digital ID. This would be infinitely worse than the potential of a bad actor 
stealing your ID. Infinitely worse. But it strikes me that in the name of protection, the government might, they might scare you. I think it would be a net detriment to society if we all had to sign up for these digital IDs that are all handed out by a centralized governing authority. There are better ways. I've been using PGP, which is a protocol, stands for pretty good privacy. You can find something if you're on a Mac at gpgtools.org. This is an awesome protocol that gives you, kind of works like Bitcoin, a private and a public key. You assign that public and private key to your email, and then you can sign when you have sent something from that email. It is way more sovereign than giving up your identity, get more importantly, giving up the control of your identity to a centralized government who, whether we believe it or not, doesn't actually have our best intentions at heart. It is apparent that the abusive use of AI to conduct fraudulent activity is an evolving and industry-wide challenge, which OKX is comprehensively addressing. Woof! Lots of big legal words in that statement. Basically a nothing statement saying, holy shit, we have no idea what happened and this is a big problem. This is nuts. Pretty much all online KYC is rendered useless due to AI fake IDs. All <laughs> KYC companies right now. Yeah, these guys have football games, man. They are absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Just like patting the air, looking for stuff. I think it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, this won't work on a system that biometrically verifies against a video that checks for additional liveliness and then connects to the DMV Oof, in real time. You had me until it connects to the DMV. Why on earth? Would the Department of Motor Vehicles be the best place to tie your identity? Real KYC is expensive. Most of these foreign shadow exchanges use the bare minimum and don't care about compliance. No, Marshall, like, this is a bad take. This is someone that's got a pessimistic view of the free market and that trusts daddy, the government, to always be there for us. Honestly, a centralized governing authority having access to your ID is wrong. And we've accepted it because this is a system that we've grown up into, that we were born into. We know nothing else, but the Overton window of the government having all of our information is moving. We, as a society, have to understand that when there are centralized people involved, there are centralized problems that exist. When you have no insight into those centralized problems, you are completely stripped of your freedom. Another person says, you need to see this. This is not a crypto problem. Let me be clear, crypto is a problem. Every institution, crypto or trad, he means traditional finance, legacy finance, as we say here, is about to face massive ID fraud because of AI. Crypto is, in fact, the only solution. Boom, he means Bitcoin is the only solution because physical IDs and pictures of them is now a garbage fire of fake. Yeah, he means dumpster fire. This guy speaks weird, but that's okay. Actually has been for a long time, but AI makes it scale. Yeah, bingo. We were building a product probably about two years ago now. So you could buy Bitcoin with e-transfer. And, and we had that set up and we moved to buying Bitcoin with Visa debit. You know, your debit cards that you have connected to your bank account. I loved the user experience of buying Bitcoin like you were shopping for a toothbrush. You could just go to the website, pick how much Bitcoin you wanted, enter in your Visa debit card, and then off you go. Bitcoin doesn't necessarily fix the fact that AI can generate some fake ID. But the only reason we need identity in the first place, the only reason we need people to verify and compromise their privacy to buy crypto on OKX or a crypto exchange is because the fiat system is so broken. So what do we do? with this broken fiat ecosystem. Obviously you opt out, you buy Bitcoin, take it into self-custody, that's one thing. But what is the future of digital identity? How does Bitcoin and a digital identity react? Well, personally, I think we can look at Noster and protocols like Bitcoin and PGP and the Noster protocol. We can really start to see how we can truly own our identity. If I have a Noster, an NPUB, which is verifiably me because I have proven to the world that it is me through some publicly visible, but not privacy compromising verification process. And then I can attach the pretty good privacy protocol to that NPUB. And then I can put my money under that same protocol and that same umbrella. All of a sudden we have a sovereign financial ecosystem where I can send money. People know it came from me if I want them to know, and I never have to compromise my privacy again. Ladies and gentlemen, it is so important that we lean into these new technologies that help keep us free. Thanks so much for watching. If you wanna see more content like this, make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to stay soft.